Okay, so in this tutorial, we're going to have a look at the decks and tractor and the different deck modes you can use. We're using for this uh, tutorial the two deck internal mode, which means that we're using two decks um, and all the mixing is being done internally using the software or using your mouse here uh, to control the faders and the EQs. This is typically the kind of mode that you would use if you're using uh, an external MIDI controller. Um, you can use an external MIDI controller to control your um, your faders and your EQs and that kind of thing. Uh, but we're just going to be using the, uh, the mouse for this tutorial. So external mixer mode, you'll notice the mixing controls have disappeared there. That's because we're sending the audio to an external mixer and what happens is we use using our sound card we send deck A to one channel on our external mixer and deck B to a second channel and we have we, we just use the external mixers uh, EQ controls and faders to control the output then. Um, you have then four deck internal mixer mode um, which is the same as two deck except we have more decks. Um, you'll notice that the decks have got smaller that's because they're in mini mode you can expand those decks, either of them, by clicking on that top row again, so it's worth remembering that. Uh, we also have four deck external mode as well, which again, that will send up the four decks to four independent channels on your mixer, so giving you even greater control. But as I said, for this tutorial, we are going to use the two deck control. So the first thing I'm going to do is load up some tracks here. Let me see. Okay, so one way of doing it, which is probably the quickest and easiest way, is using control and either right or left click on your arrow keys. So I'm going to left click on that one. But the other way you can do it is by dragging and dropping into your chosen deck. Now looking at the decks themselves, here we have the deck heading. Um, this is where any information that we have stored in the metadata of this track, this will appear in the deck heading. So in this case we have track name at the top, artist in the middle row, um, record label in the bottom row, plus we have the track time, um, again record label there but we can customize that to whatever we want. The current BPM of the track, so this changes depending on where the pitch control is, which is here on the right hand side. If you want to reset the pitch to zero you double click on the fader. The percentage beneath that is your plus or minus percentage that you are away from, um, from from zero on your pitch shift. The other BPM here at the bottom is the original BPM of the track as well. Now these uh, these fields can all be customized to whatever display whatever information that you want. So to do this we go into preferences, we go to deck details and this part here deck heading um, this is a really cool feature because you can change the information that's displayed in the top row, the middle row or the bottom row by choosing from these drop downs if you want the, the beats or the, the gain or the, the BPM, whatever information you want. You'll see here, we'll change, uh, we'll change this deck here, um, so, so you'll see there the gain control has appeared on the right hand deck there. Um, I generally stick to title because if I'm working in four deck mode where I have um, the mini decks set up, it only displays the top row of the deck heading. So, you know, you really need to be seeing the title of the track as opposed to any other information in there. So we're going to expand those decks again by clicking on that top row. The next thing we want to look at is the waveform display and the stripe views, which give us a visual representation of the tracks that we've loaded. Um, the stripe view, which is the one at the bottom, this will only appear once Tractor has analyzed your music. So if you load up a track and it's not there, that just means that Tractor is currently analyzing it. So it'll appear in a couple of seconds. Um, when Tractor analyzes it, it means it's detected the BPM and it's set the first beat marker. And it's, it's gonna work with the, with the decks. Um, the next time you load it in, it'll load up instantly. Um, the other view we have here is the waveform display. Um, again, this gives us another visual representation of the track. Um, it gives us a complete overview um, with light areas in the waveform representing high frequency sounds and then sort of darker, uh, thicker areas in the waveform representing the likes of your kick. Um, we have it set up here so you can zoom in or out 
on your waveform using these buttons here. I prefer to use the zoomed in mode so I can see exactly where the kicks are going to be in my track. Okay, um, so the stripe view then beneath this, this again, it provides another overview of the entire track and it will show us where the any stored cue points or hot cues and loops are saved in the track. And you can click through this. Now it's best to have sort of quantize mode selected for this so that when, when we click through it, it'll land on the beat. So, so you can really go in and find whatever point in the track that you want to find. Um, the stripe view will also flash whenever the track end warning time has been reached. So I think in this case it's about 30 seconds. So you'll see it's flashing there. That means that there's 30 seconds left to go in the track. Now you can change that if 30 seconds is not enough for you. You can go into preferences again, go into global view options, and you will see here track end warning you can put it up to two minutes or all the way down to 30 seconds again. So that's another really handy option there just to make sure that you don't run out of time when you're when you're DJing. Um, on the left hand side then of the uh, of the stripe, this button here is for bringing playback back to the very start. So you just click that no matter where you are on the tr track it'll uh, it'll jump right back to the very start on the right hand side here we have our key lock button as well so this is if you are DJing and you want all your music to stay in the same key um, even though you've, you've changed the pitch of it you want it to, to play in the original key you click on this button and it will stay it will play in its native key there as well okay um, this here as well as our pitch control this again can be modified by going into the preferences why would you want to modify it well you can have a pitch range of up to a hundred percent which you know is quite a lot I tend to use the plus or minus eight percent mode because it uh, it most closely resembles the kind of pitch range that you would have on a conventional turntable so to do that we go into transport and you can see here we have different pitch ranges. We click on 8%. This is the one I like to use. And I hit OK then. OK, a couple more things. Uh, we have three different input modes on Tractor, which can be accessed using this little arrow here underneath the deck. The first one is internal playback. That's the mode that we're currently using now. So all the uh, all the playback is done internally using the software. But you have other modes here which are worth looking at. This one is called audio through. Now what this does, this means that effectively I can use one of my decks uh, to plug in a external source, an external audio source, whether that's a CD player, whether it's a microphone, that kind of thing, um, which is really cool when you consider that you've got four decks here. You could essentially have three decks playing tracks and then a, a fourth deck with something else coming through. You'll notice that um, you your transport controls will be made redundant because you, you can't use them in this mode, but you will be able to use your EQs, your filters, and any effects. So, you know, if you wanted to stick a microphone in and put some effects on your, on your, your voice, you could do that using your sound card and using audio through. The, uh, the third mode then is scratch control. Um, this is for people who are using tractor scratch. They will typically use this mode. You'll notice that the transport controls here have changed uh, to relative and absolute buttons. So if you if you ever load up tractor and, and you see these uh, strange buttons here and you're wondering I ha why have I not seen these before, look in here under this arrow to find the mode that you want. So we're gonna go back to internal playback mode. Um, for this tutorial so that's essentially a look at the decks uh, a quick look at the decks in the next video we're going to look at the transport controls which are the the main buttons for playback using tractors internal playback mode